Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of A Handful of Hope. I am so happy and grateful to have Rebecca with us today, who's a native of Colorado and a lifelong learner, plus a jack of all trades, a sign language interpreter, a teacher, landlord, mother to three adult children, and successful inventor. Her greatest joy is watching people realize their own power. Rebecca is a master facilitator and trainer of the Regenerating Images and Memory, a powerful emotional processing tool used by therapists, coaches, and counselors around the world. The whole of Rebecca's work is meeting people where they are, helping them to quickly and easily clear traumas, beliefs, or stories that are no longer serving them and uncovering the truth of themselves. People are designed to be happy and heal. Rebecca helps them live that way. Rebecca, welcome and thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. You're one of my favorite people, so I'm so glad that I get to be on this. Oh, thank you. You know, I, something I love and appreciate about you, Rebecca, is I feel like you have such a, like a beautifully genuine expression when you when you when you smile, your whole face smiles. And you were saying something before we talked, uh, or before we talked, we were talking before we started recording. <laughs> about one of the challenges with how do we connect when we can't smile you know we have masks over our face and stuff when we're going to the grocery store and I, I it was such a poignant point I was hoping you would expand on that a little bit absolutely I you know I I realized that when I was at the grocery store the other day and I had my mask on and I felt myself smile as I walked in and I looked at people that were either walking out or customers or other you know, people that were working at the store. And I realized that I needed to reach out a little bit further, that I needed to kind of stretch to make sure that I was having that same kind of connection with those people. So normally I would just, you know, make eye contact and smile and, and people smile back. And now with a big mask across my face, um, I realized that little crinkly eyes probably doesn't do... <laughs> doesn't really have the same message. And so, um, and so I would, so I started voicing, you know, hi, how are you? Thanks for being here today. You know, how are you guys doing? That kind of stuff and just making that kind of a little extra effort. And I, we were talking before about how much people are making that extra effort. Um, and it's just astounding to me how in all of these times that our I mean, by many accounts, probably some of the most stressful times that people have experienced, at least in recent memory, if not ever, and there's so much happening that that's what's coming through, people's mm. humanity, people's genuineness, their kindness, their love for each other. I, I mean, I don't know about everybody's Facebook feed, but mine is just filled with all kinds of ways that people are doing and helping and loving others and doing more than we've ever thought to do before. And I'm just so overwhelmed regularly by that level of compassion and love that's happening on our planet right now. It's just amazing to me. In your bio, you talk about meeting people where they are. And I love that you acknowledge that because I think sometimes people think that to help people, to support people, to be of service to someone, that we have to be three steps ahead of them. And that it's a, we're above and we reach out to help pull them up. And in a time like this, where some of us may perceive ourselves as not being there, you know, where people are applying for unemployment for the first time, there's uncertainty about the economy, people are worried about the health of their loved ones. <clears throat> But really, truly, it doesn't take much to meet people where they are and be of service to them. What, what is, for you, what does it mean to meet someone where they're at? And how can we all do that more? You know, I think we all walk longer and further if we're walking with someone. Mm. I don't know mm. how motivated I would feel if someone was walking three steps ahead of me. I'm not so motivated to just follow as mm -hmm. I am if they're walking beside me. And I mean, I can walk all day with someone beside me. And, and so that's just, for me, meeting people where they are is a, just a true level of acceptance. Not only 
oh, well, I accept you for where you are, you poor thing, you're so <laughs> broken. Not that. It's more this understanding that people are whole, that they are complete, that they, are, they have a huge capacity to heal. And when you know that and you see that in other people, it's easy to be with them. It's mm -hmm. easy no matter what kind of behaviors or things that they're working through to know that their capacity to, to be who they want to be and to heal wounds that maybe haven't had a chance to heal yet is there. It's super easy to walk alongside people and to love them where they are because what you're loving is not their behavior. You're not loving what they're presenting with or where they are in society or whatever. You're, you're loving the core of them, which in all of us is a piece of us that's so connected that you know when you walk into a room and you just feel that energy of someone or you walk up to someone, maybe somebody that you've just met and you just feel that, oh, we're going to be friends, mm. right? You just feel that because there's just a genuine love and acceptance and not, I accept you, mm. you poor thing, because I'm above you. That's not it. It's, we're all here and we all have this core that's the same and we all want the same things. We're all capable of the same capacities and when we connect with each other on that level, it's unlimited. All that we can that we can do and be and feel with each other, it's unlimited. I absolutely loved how you answered that about walking further together than and it's so true. I was even thinking about this when I was actually walking the other day. I I went for a walk by myself on Sunday and about a couple miles into it, my inner voice starts complaining about aches and pains and being tired and bored, blah, blah, blah. I went for a social distance walk last night with a friend and <clears throat> there was over five miles done before we were done and I didn't even notice, you know, and I was like, whoa, we should just keep walking. So, yeah, you know, that, that, Endless opportunity for connection. In your in your vision of the world, you know, a nice simple question for you. We'll talk, <laughs> in your vision of the world. Nothing heavy. Yeah, nothing, <laughs> nothing too major here. We're keeping it simple and small. In your vision, in your vision of the world, what does it look like when people are really exploring that potential for connecting with one another? Maybe not exploring it, but uh, exploring is not the word, but actually proactively seizing it, grabbing onto it, embracing it. I think connection with others starts with our connection with ourselves. And I think this time, like even when you said you went for a social distancing walk, it creates this space for ourselves where this situation is, is, it's almost, I don't want to say forcing, but it's heavily encouraging us to be with ourselves. Mm. And when we're with ourselves long enough, just like we're with others long enough, we find out things that we didn't realize before. When we're with ourselves, we, we are allowing ourselves to feel. And the more we feel, the more we have to connect with others with. So my vision of the world when people are embracing this is when people, it sounds a little cliche as it's coming out of my mouth, but um, when they're connecting with themselves. And when I say that, I mean tapping into, tapping into your emotional operating system, tapping into where your emotions are guiding you because we're always healing, our emotions are guiding us down a path and giving little nudges here and there. 
And when we're open to hearing those nudges, when we're open to listening, when we've spent enough time with ourselves that we, that we can hear those emotions, we can hear those messages, then it's going to guide us to be with other people. It's going to guide us to do things that are reaching out. And I think that's what we've seen so much in this time of COVID-19 is that people are kind of allowing themselves to be in this space. Mm. And we're kind of reaching this tipping point where they've stopped holding on to what was. And there's, there's a little bit of grieving that's happening there as that stuff is fading away. And then, but then there's, like you said, there's embracing of new things. And as we embrace ourselves, we can embrace others, but we can only love others to the degree that we can love ourselves. So doing this connection and in creating this um, new friendship with ourselves and understanding ourselves allows us to really connect with others. I think that's why we've seen so much people reaching out and, and all these stories of puppies going to retirement communities and stuff like that, right? Is because people are realizing what they have and what they are. And when you really get past all of those layers of what you think you are down to what you are, we're all this just bundle of love and light and energy. And when we're sitting in that love and light and energy of ourselves, boy, we just see it in everybody else. It's just, so I don't know if that answers your question, but my yeah kind of vision of the world is really embracing that love and light from inside to outside. How do we, how does the person who, as they sit there with themselves, they realize they may not really like themselves or parts of themselves. I, they may be trying to avoid part of themselves. They may be, Maybe they medicate even alcohol, drugs, something like that, to try to avoid that confrontation with themselves or whatever, whatever that is for that person. How does that person who maybe struggles with that stillness with themselves, how do they get past those layers to get to the love and light piece? That's so interesting because I was just talking to someone about that. Um, these layers are always working to heal themselves, just like our layers of skin. Mm. So this is creating a crucible for us, a space where that stuff is coming up and it's showing us our real selves. So when we're, when we see those parts of us that we don't like, it's learning to love those parts anyway. And here's why people say, just love yourself anyway. And they go, yeah, that's kind of hard. But when you get the perspective that that piece of you became a piece of you because it's only desire is to protect you. It mm -hmm. only wants to serve you. So in the work that I do, the regenerating images and memory, we allow people to just be with those things. So you can call in your resources, things that are safe, loving, and powerful, allow your imagination to show you what those resources are. But loving that piece of yourself and getting perspective on it. So, oh, I'm so upset that I, I'm, I, I don't like this piece of myself or that I don't like that I can't stop drinking or whatever. So when we allow that, let's just use example of drinking. When we allow that behavior to just show up as an image and just be with us and have a conversation with it and say, what I feel like when I'm looking at you, alcohol bottle or whatever the image is, what it feels like when I look at you is I get so disappointed or I whatever, whatever's coming up, whatever's in your heart, whatever's flowing and needs to be released, just talking to it mm -hmm. saying, I just... What I want from you is this, and what I really need is that, and how it feels to say all this to you. 
And then here's a crucial piece to move your awareness into that thing, into that bottle of alcohol or whatever the image is that comes up and listen to it. How I'm trying to help you is how I have, what I want for you is because those behaviors are there to protect you. They're there to keep you from feeling because they're afraid that you're going to get hurt. They don't want you to be hurt. Mm -hmm. And so when we get that perspective of knowing that it's, it was trying to help us and then we can say, okay, but what I know now is, and what I need is, and what, so we can have this conversation back and forth with those parts of ourselves or those behaviors and allow to allow ourselves to get perspective and have compassion for ourselves. That version that wherever that started, we can also go back to, okay, when did I first feel this way? Well, I first felt this way when I was 15 or 10 or five or whatever. And what was happening? I think I, I watched an interview with you. I think you were talking to Michael Klein, I don't remember, and you said that you had um, an image of, um, of going and delivering a rent check and that those images and the, those feelings were still coming up for you. Those feelings, that energy that was stored in your body at that age when you were doing that, it was stored there because it was traumatic. Hmm. And it was something that you didn't have the capacity to be able to process at the time. And so now when you create safety by calling in your resources and you access that version of yourself and you have compassion and listen, allow that version of yourself to say, I'm scared. I don't know what's going to happen. Are we going to have a place to live? And what I want to say is, and what I really need right now is, and then you can be there for yourself. Your adult self can be there for your younger self and say, you're going to be okay, kiddo. I know because I'm you, mm -hmm. right? And I know that we're going to be great. So hang in there. And here's what I can tell you about you that you don't know. You're strong. You're resilient. You are just a big ball of love and light and energy. And I'm going to be here for you. And when you allow that conversation to happen, moving your awareness and looking through the eyes of that version of yourself while you're doing it, you are regenerating the emotional memory with that memory. So now you can go back and, and remember that delivering the rent check and you can feel that resource of older Jesse there, of being mm -hmm. like, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. So when we have these pieces of ourselves that we're not crazy about, that we're resisting. We know that saying, right? Whatever resists, yeah. persists, and expands. So when we feel that resistance, put it down. You've done the work. You've done, you've done the hardest part, which was experiencing it when you didn't have the resources. Now you mm. have the resources. You've already gone through the toughest part. Now you're just going to be with it. And you're going to listen to it and say, what do you need to tell me? What are you trying to do for me? And a lot of times that is just, is, is enough for you to be able to like, okay, thank you, alcohol bottle, for trying to protect me. What I know now is that I have people like Jesse and Michael Klein in my life who are going to support me and love me and help me work through that stuff. I don't need you as much anymore but I appreciate what you've done because you've helped me get to this point. Hmm. And then we can easily let those go. That was the long answer to your question. <laughs> I love that designation you made about already going through the hardest part because you didn't have the resources. I <clears throat> have long held this theory and it's, 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 a, it's been a hard one. I've had some really interesting conversations around it that even the most destructive behaviors, if you were able to chunk it down to the most foundational level, all those behaviors have some sort of origin in love. You know, the, Absolutely. The person who's a career criminal and who commits something like murder on an extreme 
their first act of violence when they're young may very well have been because they thought that was the way to be protected, the way to get acknowledgement, attention from mom, dad, whoever it was. I read this book last year about the behavioral profiles of serial killers. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely fascinating about, and I, I find it very beneficial to study these extremes of humanity, right? Because I feel like if we can find understanding this extremes, it gives us a lot of space to work with the in between of that. And when it got to the conclusion of the book, I was expecting this person to say something so profound about what we can all do as a society to stop serial killers. Here are the 10 steps we need to do right away, right? To, and what he said was in essence that if most of these people, his, his, his diagnosis of after starting thousands of these people was if they would have all just been loved a little bit more, you probably wouldn't have had the majority of them become who they were. And it was basically the message was, is that if we could all just love a little more, you know, here's somebody working in the FBI who literally spends the majority of his waking hours talking with serial killers, people who have done the most extreme horrific things that we can even imagine that before he even went out there and started to do this work, we classified him. And we still do this day as monsters because it removes humanity, right? And it, mm -hmm. it makes it so we don't have to identify with them. He's just sitting there saying that at the end, if we just all learn to love more, it would make it better. And it blew my mind because I was like, I was like, man, well, there it is right there, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess this is a long way of asking and coming back to what you were saying, how do we, how do we love more? As a, you know, you were talking so beautifully before we're on this pause, the opportunity that's in front of us. And I think, and you and I share this belief, is one of the greatest opportunities to probably come out of this is there's an opportunity for us to all love more. You know, how, how do we start to love more, Rebecca? I think we start with what you had said about loving the pieces of ourselves that we don't like so much, you know? Mm. I think when we really, when part of the reason that we want to disconnect from serial killers or from these extreme behaviors is because there is a piece of us that knows that we're all capable of that. We all have this shadow side. And the more that we ignore that shadow side of ourselves, and the more delusional that we get, right? So many of us were fortunate enough to be loved enough to fit within our society's ideas of what's right or normal or mainstream or good people, right? But when we love these shadow sides of ourselves, this side of ourselves that gets angry, the side of ourselves that has had thoughts of hurting someone, the shadow side, when we love those parts of ourselves, when we accept them that that's part of humanity, that that's part of us, that it allows us to expand in both directions. Mm. So as we explore the shadow side, we explore the lighter side. So we just expand out. We don't grow in one direction. We expand out. So understanding, like, I love that you read that book and to explore the extremes. Because as you can have compassion for someone who went down a path, that at the end of the path, you go, how is that even possible? When you track it back and you say, they didn't get the love they needed. They didn't, they were protecting, they were being hurt. And so they were protecting. And that's true for all of us. All of us protect ourselves in so many ways, right? We say, I don't, I can't have that because we're afraid that we're not worth whatever value we put on having it is, right? We protect ourselves by saying, um, all kinds of things in our own head and those tapes that play about what we are or who we are or where we belong or we do those things to protect ourselves and other people are just doing other things. Some people are drinking, some people are doing drugs, some people are abusive, some people, 
it, it varies a lot. Some people help other people to the detriment of themselves. Yeah. That's a coping mechanism, right? But all of these sides have light and shadow. And the more we explore the shadow, the more we can explore the light. So the more we have compassion for everything, everyone, every part of ourselves, the more we can reach out and love in more expansive, incredible ways. That's what's happening on our planet right now that you see, is you see that people are struggling in, in, in even little struggles, like, ah, I need to get out of the house. Um, even those little struggles, and then when they get out of the house, they're like standing at the gas pump going, hi, 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 how are you? They see you, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> because the more we explore one, the more that we can explore the other. Rebecca, in the interest of time, we have about 30 seconds left. I just want to ask you one other thought. And I, I wish we had about 45 more minutes because I don't feel like we've scratched the surface somewhere. I want to go with this with you right now. I shared with you before that I hold this intention that whoever needs to hear this, exactly what they need to hear, exactly what they need to see is watching and listening right now. You know, from your heart, whatever's on your heart, what is the message that you want to leave that person with? That you're on your path. That this path is, this is your path. And that you can't get off your path. That the more that we explore our path, the more we realize it's just so wide and so vast. There's nothing that you can do wrong here. That every step that you take, you'll get feedback for. And you'll get feedback that you want to continue going in that direction or you'll get feedback that you want to go in a different direction. But there's no wrong here. You are complete. You are whole. You are exactly who you're supposed to be when you're, when you're supposed to be at right here, right now. You are who you're supposed to be. You're perfect. There's no wrong making here. There's no I should be's. You are who you are and you're perfect. And whatever new, the more you just open and love yourself where you are, the more you can feel comfortable with where you are. Everyone, I feel like I just got done having an emotional spa time with Rebecca and I hope that you feel the same too and you'll rewatch this and I think this is one of those ones you don't want to just listen but you want to feel I think sometimes when we watch and rewatch interviews like this I know I do is I'm trying to always listen for what, what is said how does she say it what is the little nugget or the tidbit that really resonates with me I think this one is more of an experiential one where maybe not put that pressure on yourself to listen, but just experience. Rebecca is one of those rare people who it's not what she says as much as it's how she says it. You can see the congruence with her in everything she's saying and passing on. And I think that's such a remarkable thing because there's a lot of people who will say stuff, but the ones who are actually practitioners of it, who own what they're saying, there's real wisdom to learn there because there's a difference between taking theory and having theory transform into tangible reality. And when you find someone who has that being a tangible reality, I think that those are your teachers. Those are the ones that you can really download so much wisdom from. And whether it's the, it's forming the connection piece, whether it's really looking at those layers and loving yourself and realizing that who you were back then, you already went through the hardest part because you didn't have the resources that you do now. God, that was powerful. And that, Right now is an opportunity to not only love yourself and have compassion for yourself more, but an opportunity to love and have compassion for others more. And as Rebecca perfectly said to close out, you're on your path. Your path is your path and you're perfect right where you are on your path. Rebecca, this is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your magic, your, your passion, your energy, your love and compassion with us today. I am so grateful for you and, and how you show up and serve others. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. I love you to pieces. Absolutely. We'll see you next time, everybody, on another edition of A Handful of Hope. Bye-bye.